Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this part of my series, Every Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro Explained, we're going to be jumping into the adjust effects and going over these five effects. This series is brought to you by justinodisho.com slash shop, my own web shop, where you can find all of my video editing resource packs. So the first effect to kick off this series is the convolution kernel. If I click and drag this onto the clip, you'll see in the effects control panel, it pop up with all these different series of numbers, M11 to M33, and all these zeros and ones that I can adjust. So the convolution kernel uses a mathematical process called convolution. It's pretty complicated and convoluted, honestly. But imagine that this is a matrix, if you've ever learned about matrices in math, and you have M11, 12, 13 are the top three rows, and then 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, the, the second three, and three, one, three, two, three, three are the bottom three. We can influence adjustments on them up or down, and it'll essentially multiply these numbers and matrices that we give it onto a, the matrices of pixels in there, allowing us to create sharpening effects, blurring effects, beveling or embossing brightness and darkness type of effects. Now, this is quite a complicated mathematical process, and it's hard to know exactly what numbers are going to create what effects. And Premiere does load up with basically all of the useful convolution kernel presets already there for us. And by starting with these, I don't have to do all that guesswork in figuring out the mathematical matrix for the intended effect that I want. So there are some potentially useful things like sharpening, which does sharpen or something like a find edges but to be honest there's probably going to be better ways for you to blur and sharpen most of the time but it is fun to know just how much math and video go together next up we have extract which is a pretty cool filter actually coming from the adjust folder and this allows us to grayscale the image so it makes it black or white and given our black input and white input level we can get a different balance of black to white so it goes all the way from zero to 255 and all the gray in between, depending on the softness that you use. So if I use zero softness, you're gonna see it's pretty harsh, black and white. But in this way, we can actually create pretty cool stencil or outline effects. If I increase the softness a lot, I can create unique black and white looks, almost as if we had messed around with the curves or used a, a gradient map with varying highlights and shadows. You have the option to simply invert it from black to white. This is an effect I can definitely see just being used for the creative look of it. Or if you wanted to use it kind of as like a step one in a multi-layered effect, one thing you can do is, you know, maybe create a stencil black and white type of thing like this. And then if I drag another clip on top and just use simple blending modes like multiply or lighten, in this way I could create stenciled out or like filled in image type of effects. And again, like I mentioned in the very intro to this series, all of these come with the ability to mask. So really, your, it's your creativity that limits the possibilities for these. The next effect in the adjust folder is the levels effect. And this allows us to adjust the levels. If you're familiar with levels in Photoshop or any editing software, these things go from 0 to 255 in accordance with the red, green, blue color theory. And you can basically adjust the amounts of red, green, and blue with these input levels. It is a bit of a mathematical way to do it. There are kind of more intuitive ways to do it in Premiere with you know lumetri color settings and the and the like. But levels is a good tool to be familiar with. You'll see it across Photoshop, After Effects, many of these editing softwares. It's a little bit better when you can get to visually adjust the sliders rather than playing around with numbers. Next up, we have lighting effects. This is a kind of cool one. It just allows us to create artificial spotlights and ambient lights. Uh, you can create up to five lights here. You can make them spotlight, directional, omni. You can adjust the basic position, intensity, and color of these things. You don't have to use multiple lights. You can just use one uh, or a couple, depending on how many you want. But you know, here's a cool, if we did a red and a green, and you can make the lights move and keyframe them, dance together if you want. You have some pretty self-explanatory options to adjust the intensity of the overall image, the glossiness that's, that the lights produce. You do have a cool option to use a bump layer. So in this way, we can kind of use 
the texture from another layer. Obviously, maybe I wouldn't want to use a video of a cup, but if I had like a brick wall or maybe some specific texture, it could help with some more 3D type of lighting or special effects. Lastly, in the adjust folder, we have the proc amp or the processing amplifier, which is that that is short for. In video equipment, there are processing amplifiers, which is used to adjust these things in real time when broadcasting. So if you needed to adjust brightness, contrast in real time, it's like in a processing amplifier, kind of like how audio equipment has. As far as I understand, this is a way to emulate that. If you want to adjust brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, the processing amplifier isn't my first choice. So perhaps there's some sort of link between how this emulates the actual video broadcasting software that I'm missing. But for myself, I've never had to use this emulation of a processing amplifier much. So those are all the effects in the adjust folder. Again, in this series, I'm going to be going over every single effect in every folder. So in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the most useful effects now in the blur and sharpen sections and how to pronounce some of these ones like, is that Gaussian and where does that name come from? So if you're new, you can find all these videos in order on a playlist on my channel. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.